Hey, this is Scott, and today we're going to take a look at the menus and functions of the Yongnuo YN-E3RT. I did a review of this together with the YN686EXRT Speedlight, so if you want to check that out, then be sure to click on screen now or down in the description below. Today's video will be focusing on the transmitter interface and the different menu systems and functions. So first up, we'll go over the physical layout of the buttons on here. We have, of course, the power button here, which also features a lock in the middle where you can lock all of these buttons so you don't accidentally change any settings. This is an exposure compensation lamp. This is the test flash button, the mode button, the linked shot button, which is something you probably won't use unless you're shooting with multiple cameras at different angles at the same time, and the four custom function buttons with the two middle ones being pushed at the same time to clear all your current settings. Finally, we have this wheel where we can adjust all of our settings and the OK button in the center of that. Up top, we also have this link light, which will tell you if you're currently successfully connected to your flash or not. So now we'll turn it on and take a look at how each of the different modes work. We have four modes in total, ETTL, manual, multi, and group modes. We'll start off from ETTL. On screen now, you can see that this is currently controlling all of your flashes at the same time if you have more than one. You have your exposure compensation meter here. You can see that the ratio is currently off and this is set as the master. You're on channel one and this is just the wireless setting. Before we go any further, you can see that the link light is currently red, which means that I'm not connected to my flash. So before that, I'm going to go ahead and turn my flash on and you'll see that the link light will turn green when they are connected. So down the bottom, you'll see that these custom function buttons are each assigned to a different custom function and this will change depending on what mode you're in. There's also more than one menu for each mode, so we'll go through that now. The first button will get you to the custom functions, which we will go through later in detail, so I'm going to skip over that for now. This button here will bring you into the flash exposure compensation, which you can adjust with the dial as usual. The next button is your flash exposure bracketing. You can adjust how much your shots will be uh, bracketed by here, and that's pretty standard as well as far as exposure bracketing goes. And then the last button will go to the second page of menus. In ETTL mode, the second page will have your ratio option. You can see now that the ratio is off. If you press it once, you'll get an A to B ratio. And if you press it again, you'll add in group C. Now that we have a couple of groups here, you can press the group button to go ahead and adjust any of these groups. When you push it once, it'll jump into group C. And you can see here it changed to C plus or minus, which is the exposure compensation for group C. You can adjust that with the wheel as usual and either press OK or use this back button. But when you press OK again, this will jump back and forth between choosing group C and adjusting the flash exposure compensation. So to go back out to the main menu, you'll want to push this one more time and we're back here. Moving on to menu page three, we have the channel where you can go ahead and adjust the channel, of course, with the wheel here. You can choose your ID, which will just give you an ID number. And then you can scan. This will scan for the strongest radio signal and we'll just let that do that here. and it will display on screen uh, the different channels and how strong their signals are. You can go ahead and set which one you want yourself, but this will tell you which one is the strongest. And I'm on channel one now, so that's not a problem. The next option is to go to the fourth page of menus, which has the version information, and that will just tell you which version you're currently working on. Of course, you can update that firmware via the USB port on the side. Uh, you can control high speed and sync here, and also you can load some settings from memory or save some settings to memory and finally go back to the first page of the menu. Going into the next mode, we have manual mode here and there's some similar settings down here. Custom function, ratio, group, and going on to menu page two. Page two has the sync function, which will control, of course, high speed sync, but also rear curtain sync when you're in manual mode. Turn that off, go to the next page of menus. Again, you can choose your channel ID, scan, or go to the next page. Again, your version, memory, menu four, this will go back to the beginning. That's all the same as before. Moving on to the multi setting, you have a couple of different settings here. Of course, you can still go in to choose your custom functions, uh, but we have the multi and hertz settings here. Multi will control this first number here. This is the number of flashes you'll have in your multi mode. And then the hertz will control in the book, in the instruction book, it actually says this is uh, how many seconds it will last, but that is not true. This number divided by this number will give you the number of seconds that you should set on your camera as your shutter speed. So for example, four and two will give you a two second shutter speed. If I change the Hertz to four, four divided by four is one, that will give you a one second shutter speed. 
Moving on to menu two, we have some of the same ratio group and then we move on for channel ID scan. Menu three goes on to the version memory and menu four brings us back to the beginning. Finally, going into the last mode is the group mode. This is one of the more useful modes. You can control each group individually. So down here we have our custom functions again. Exposure compensation will do exposure compensation for every group. Back out of that. Group will let you choose which group you're working with here so you can scroll through the groups and then you can press either OK to jump into that group's settings or you can push here, you can see a change to A plus or minus, B plus or minus, C plus or minus, D plus or minus, depending on which group we have selected. When you push that, it will also jump into this uh, settings here. So you can adjust the level of that particular group. Pushing it again will back out. You can go to the next group, or again, you can use this back arrow to back out to the last menu. If we go onto the next page of menus, we have flash exposure bracketing, which will let you choose how much you want to set your brackets by. And then you can sync. Again, we have high speed sync here. And then you can move on to the next page of menus, which once again has channel ID, scan, and the option to go to the next menu, which is your version, memory, and menu to bring you back to the beginning. Jumping into our custom functions, we have uh, auto power off, and you can choose on or off, and when it's on, it will turn off after five minutes. Next up is our modeling flash options. The first option, option zero, is to use the depth of field preview button on your camera to uh, set off that modeling flash. The second option here, actually option number one, is to use this button. The next option is to use either one, and the last option is to turn that function off. Next up we have our flash exposure bracketing auto cancel. You can turn that on or off. So that means after you take the three shots for your flash exposure bracketing, if you're using that setting, it will either auto cancel that for the next series of shots or it will keep it on. After that is our flash exposure bracketing sequence. You can choose the order which the shots are taken at from uh, zero to the minus setting and the plus setting or from minus zero plus in order there. So you can adjust that how you'd like it. Our next setting is to adjust the power where the test flash will fire when it's in ETTL mode. You can choose either one 30 second power or full power. And that's just when it's in ETTL mode, it will adjust how powerful the flash is when you push the test flash button. The next option is to turn the AF assist beam on or off, but keep in mind, even if it's on, you have to use one shot or single shot mode for this to work. The next custom function is actually a really useful one. The standard setting that it will be automatically set on is this zero setting. And this is when you're making adjustments to your exposure. If you want to have to push the button first and then turn the wheel or just turn the wheel. I'll show you what I mean. When it's set in the standard setting, as you'll get it from the factory, turning the wheel does nothing. You have to push the button first and then turn this to make adjustments. But if we go back in there and choose the second setting, when I go back here and just turn the wheel automatically, it will just make adjustments for me. I think that's a lot easier. You don't have to push any extra buttons. So I'm gonna be leaving it at that. Next up is the beep. You can just turn that on or off. Not sure if you can hear that, but I usually turn it off because it's annoying. That will just beep when your flash is ready, but you'll actually get a little signal here that will tell you if your flash is ready. So you might not always be looking at that, but then again, you might not always need to hear that either. So you can set that how you see fit. Finally is the LCD illumination. You can choose to have it on a 12 second automatic off uh, always off or always on. I've kept it always on for the purpose of this demonstration, but you can choose how you want that to be set in order to save batteries. So that's about it. There are a couple of other things that this can do, including being a wireless trigger for your camera and uh, this linked shot option that I talked about, but I personally won't be using that, so I'm not gonna go through it here. This is more just an overview of this itself and the different menus and kind of the interface that you'll be working with when you're using this. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below and I'll be happy to get back to you. If you liked this video or found it helpful, give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. As always, thank you for watching.